Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yep, it's a webinar <laughs> um, that we uh, will cover anything that may be of interest to librarians across Nebraska and across the country. Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, but they are recorded, so if you're unable to watch us, uh, join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and watch any of the recordings of all the shows we've done um, on, on, on Encompass Live. Um, and we do a mixture of things here. We do presentations, we do many training sessions, interviews, demos, um, basically anything that has to do with libraries, we'll put it on the show. We're not that picky. <laughs> anything interesting? Yes, anything interesting. Um, the, and we have uh, guest speakers that will come in sometimes, and sometimes we have Nebraska Library Commission staff, which is what we have this morning. Um, next to me I have Sally Snyder, who is the coordinator of Children and Young Adult Sur Library Services here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. And um, every year she gives us an update on what's going on with the summer reading program and some great titles that we can use um, in our libraries to have your summer reading program. So. Um, you should have received in um, email um, the pr pr um, handout that has to do with this as well. Um, everyone who registered ahead of time was emailed that, so you, should, you have that if you want to look at that and follow along. Um, it is also posted on our website to go and download and get, and it will also be included when the recording is put up afterwards if you didn't get it ahead of time. So you'll have access to it then as well. Um, but now I'll just hand over to Sally to take over and share with us all the books. Thank Great. you. Thanks. Um, the handout is, uh, hopefully you all, or most of you, have a copy of it in front of you so you don't have to do so much writing and it's all, the titles, authors, and everything are, are listed mm -hmm. already, so you can just make a, a plus or a minus or whatever you want to mm -hmm. do if you're finding titles you are interested in, which I hope you will. Yeah. Don't forget to say the title. No, we need to know. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Just a little technical behind the scenes. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> forgot to mention earlier. Um, just before we get started on the books, I just want to say that many of the books that are on my list are from uh, review books that publishers have sent to the Library Commission for us mm -hmm. to use, and then they get handed out to public and school libraries around the state. I do find some books at the public library that I don't receive as review books, and there are some publishers that don't send me anything or very much, and that's their decision, but they might not be represented as much here because I just haven't encountered their titles. So that's just a clarification as to why I have, I'll, perhaps you'll look at this and say, well, why are so many from this publisher and, and only one from somebody else? And that's the main reason. Also, I kind of did a little blending of themes with some of my titles. The children's theme is Dig Into Reading. And so most of the books on my children's list are things to do with digging in the earth or creatures that live in the earth, things like that. Um, I do have a little bit of, of blending over of the teen theme beneath the surface because a couple of titles really fit that theme but were children's picture books. So, um, And then vice versa, some titles for teens that are more about dig into reading. But perhaps you do that all the time at your library anyway. I hope so. So let's get started with dig into reading. Oops, I thought that would work. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, so picture books, we'll start with fiction picture books. Dinny Dinosaur by Karen Beaumont. Dinny is digging in the dirt in his yard and getting very dirty. Mom insists on a bath before he goes to bed. The silliness begins here. Dinny scrubs his feet without removing his shoes, then his legs without removing his slacks, and so on. A loving mom corrects him each time and says, Back you go, and puts him in the tub. The rhyming text and upbeat illustrations work together well. This will be a good story time choice. And while the focus of the book is the bath, the reason he needs it is because of the digging, which is greatly represented on the cover. Yes. <clears throat> this is kind of a beneath the surface um, title for the younger kids. Lou the wolf is looking forward to having sheep for dinner when he encounters Rambo the ram. Lou tries some disguises. Oh, I didn't say the title, sorry. The Great Sheep Shenanigans by Peter Bentley. So Lou tries some disguises, including a Red Riding Hood reference when he has Granny knit him a fluffy white outfit to fool the sheep and the ram. Rhyming text tells of the wolf's attempts and failures, and listeners will love it when Lou finally falls in some poo, which is how they refer to it in this book. 
Humor and empathy for the sheep and lambs, not so much for the wolf. <laughs> little Sweet Potato by Amy Beth Bloom. One day a little sweet potato who had spent his life snuggled down in the dirt of the farm is accidentally shaken loose by the tractor and he tumbles over the edge of the hill and down onto a road. So off he goes, rolling along, looking for another field to grow in. But he is not welcome at the fields he encounters, as you can see from the, from the flowers surrounding him there. They do not look like they like him very much. But finally he finds a hodgepodge patch where all kinds of friendly plants grow together. Plant a Little Seed by Bonnie Christensen. A boy and girl go into their urban community garden, plant seeds, watch them grow, and harvest the bounty. The reader will see planting seeds in the earth, a small illustration of the plants and their roots underground, and an illustration of the root vegetables growing underground. And then they start all over again with new seeds and another trowel. This is about the Underground Railroad, which is a different take on the underground concept. This is a wordless picture book, Unspoken, by Henry Cole. It's of a young girl choosing to help a runaway slave on his or her way to freedom. All you see is his or her eye looking out from the leaning stack of corn stalks in the barn. The girl sees slave hunters by her house, but chooses not to tell anyone and to provide some food for the individual. A small thank you is left for her. Dinosaur Dig by Penny Dale. This counting book is populated with various dinosaurs who are all identified on the front end papers. They are driving an assortment of earth moving and construction equipment. The equipment is identified on the back end papers. Their goal is to build something fun for them all. We also get some onomatopoeia with each of the pieces of, equi of equipment as they work. So you've got dinosaurs, um, road and building equipment. I think this is a, a must buy. <laughs> for the, the theme or just for the kids in general. Underground by Denise Fleming. Brief rhyming pages per two-page spread point to the variety of life growing, living, or hiding under the ground. Art dominates the pages. A two-page spread at the back of the book tells a bit more about each animal included in the illustrations. Yucky Worms by Vivian French. As a boy and his grandma dig in the garden, she tells him what worms do all day and how they are not yucky, they are her friends. It's a good information included in a fictional framework. The art shows both above ground shots and below ground looks at worms and their environment. Little Seeds by Charles Jinga. I don't know if I said that right. Rhyming text introduces the basics of plant growth. One line per page and bright illustrations make this read aloud title just right for toddler time. A multicultural trio plant the seed. Here's my shovel, here's my hoe. They will help my seed to grow. The final two pages give directions for young ones to decorate cups and plant some grass seeds to create grassy guys. With As the grass grows, it will be the hair. So I think that's a fun project <laughs> for kids. Jody's Passover Adventure by Anna Levine. This is a follow-up to her adventure in Jody's Hanukkah Dig from 2008. Jody is looking forward to making more discoveries. She and her visiting cousin Zach go through King Hezekiah's Tunnel, an ancient waterway under Jerusalem. Things almost get a bit scary, but they are determined to find the answer to the riddle in the middle that Jody's father mentioned. It's a good adventure with some history and also a bit of information about Passover. Flick a Rick a Dick, Dick a Go to Market by Maj Lindman. This is a reissue of a, the title from 1958. The girls dig in the earth, plant a garden, and sell the vegetables at the market. They hope to buy bicycles with the money they earn. And this might um, really resonate with older um, adults who are looking for something for their kids to read just because it's a younger um, reissue of a, a picture book. Okay, on to I'm Dirty by Kate and Jim McMullen. Uh, this is an older title, but it works so well for this theme. I mean, he's got mud all over him. There's lots of dirt, noise, and hard work. And it includes a countdown of things he scoops up, ten torn up truck tires, nine fractured fans, eight busted beach umbrellas. That happens over four pages. But digging out a tree stump is uh, the activity that fits this year's theme. 
It's great for story time, but be ready for noise, because he does have to rumble and, and make noises. Over and Under the Snow by Kate Messner. Fiction blends with nonfiction as a girl and her father cross-country ski and look for signs of animals. Her father explains how the animals live underground under, or under the snow. The art shows the snowy landscape on the upper part of the page with the lower part of the page showing a cutaway that looks at the activities below the snow and below the ground. An author's note and a paragraph on each of the animals provides more information for those interested. Isabella's Garden by Glenda Millard. A house that Jack built rhyme begins with it digging in the dirt and tells of a garden and its surrounding environment. Apple tree, birds, children, and so on. There's bright colors of the artwork that are appealing and I think kids love that house that Jack built um, rhythm mm -hmm. that comes with the story. Subway by Christoph Neiman. The stylized artwork catches the eye with this rhyming story of a man and two children who spend a rainy day riding the subway in New York City. Pair this title with Subway Story coming up to help readers learn more about how a subway functions because in Nebraska we don't have a subway. Mm -hmm. other, other parts of the country do and um, so it might be fun for kids to learn a little bit more about how, how they work. Oh, this is a fun one. Creepy Carrots by Erin <laughs> Reynolds. Jasper Rabbit likes to go by Krakenhopper Field to grab a delicious carrot or two while on his way to school, ball practice, or just about any time. Then one day he sees three carrots that have started to follow him. Soon he sees carrots everywhere. Mom and Dad say there is no such thing as creepy carrots, but Jasper knows better. He comes up with a plan to solve his problem. Clever, fun, just a little bit creepy, and Jasper solves the problem himself. Or so he thinks. Good Night, Good Night Construction Site by Sherry Dusky Rinker. I know I had this on my list last year, but look, that's a digger right there on the cover. A poetic look at the various machinery at work in a construction site, and four pages each tell of a particular machine and its work on the building. There are clever illustrations that, for example, show a bulldozer snuggling into the piles of dirt that look like a bed. It's sure to be a hit at story time as well. Plan to Kiss by Amy Krauss Rosenthal is the simple story of the fantasy of a girl digging in the earth, kissing the ground, thereby planting the kiss, watering it, and waiting for something to grow. It does. Hmm. Subway Story by Julia Sarcon Roach. Jesse, a subway car built in St. Louis, went to work for the 1964 World's Fair in New York City. Mm -hmm. After the fair, Jesse rumbled over the subway tracks above and below ground until she was replaced. But she was given a new job, under the sea as part of an artificial reef. One two-page spread shows an underground view of two different subway tunnels one going under the river. Colorful art completely covers the pages with a sentence or two of text in black or white. Where Do Diggers Sleep at Night by Brianna Kaplan Sayers. I didn't have this one for last year's theme, but uh, rhyming text talks about all kinds of tr trucks, but it starts with diggers. Each truck gets a two-page spread as the rhymes ask how they sleep. Where do diggers sleep at night? Do, do they dream of holes they dug? Do their moms reach front tobacco when they give a good night hug? Pair this with the previous title about the construction site and there will be many con uh, equipment fans at your session that day. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about some picture book nonfiction next. Seed by Seed by Esme Raji Codell. This is a picture book biography of Johnny Appleseed or John Chapman as he's also known. The author shares what is known about his life and philosophy mentioning that he changed the landscape of the country, and she leaves the reader with a challenge. What seed will you plant? Barnum's Bones by Tracy Fern, subtitled How Barnum Brown Discovered the Most Famous Dinosaur in the World. Barnum Brown was born in 1873, and he was fascinated with fossils from his childhood. After assisting with fossil hunts in 1894 and 1895, he was so successful that he was hired by the American Museum of Natural History in New York. They wanted him to find dinosaur bones, as they had none in their collection. His most famous discovery was a new species found in Montana, his employer named Tyrannosaurus rex. There's an author's note at the back of the book that provides additional information. 
Earth Movers on the Move by Lee Sullivan Hill is a great introduction for young readers. Beginning with, do you like to dig in the dirt? Well, what child is going to say no? <laughs> Very few. <laughs> the book goes on to introduce several types of earth movers. Brief text explains the job of each different piece of equipment. Clear full page photos will be enjoyed by dirt fans. Watch Me Grow by Deborah Hodge. City gardens are explored in this book as a follow-up to her previous title, Up We Grow. Divided into four chapters, Growing, Sharing, Eating, and Caring, we see children and adults preparing the soil, gathering the harvest, and sharing it with others. Each two-page spread has one full-page photo with text and one or two small photos on the opposite page. Bats by Angelique J. Johnson. Simple sentence provides general information on bats and how they live. I know you had bats last year, but they do live generally in caves, sometimes under bridges. The second two-page spread shows bats in a cave, and there's also another one, another photo of bats that are def definitely in a cave. So even though you didn't want to have bats again, you could <laughs> if you want to. Captain Kidd's Crew Experiments with Sinking and Floating by Mark Weekland. This is another beneath-the-surface um, sneak-in for the younger age group. A non-fiction look at the properties of seeking and floating are wrapped around the characters of pirate Captain Kidd and his crew. The concept, concepts of density, buoyancy, and displacement are explained. This would be a good choice to read aloud before sending your class or group to experiment with a tub of water and different things that they can say, is this going to sink or float before mm -hmm. they put it in the water? You might want to do mm -hmm. that outside, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> Beginning readers and early chapter books. I only have two beginning readers for this theme. I don't know why. Wiggle and Waggle by Caroline Arnold is a little bit older book, but it's so fun. It has five stories about two worm friends named Wiggle and Waggle. They make up a digging song to make their work go faster. They work together when faced with a big rock, and they have a lovely picnic on their day off. There's always plenty to do for these worm friends, and you didn't know worms got a day off, did you? <laughs> the Big Something by Patricia Riley Giff it's the first in a new series called Fiercely and Friends. Jilly falls into a hole. Her dog Fiercely is digging by the fence when Jim runs up with some puzzling news. Some kind of big red something is being built next door, and the lady who's around it is wearing a witch's hat. They are sure that's what she is. When Fiercely goes through his hole under the fence into her yard, they know they must rescue him. They have a plan for getting brave and looking scary. The second book in this fun new series came out in no last November, and it is titled The Sneaky Snow Fox. I haven't seen that book, but if you're interested in keeping up with the series, there's probably mm -hmm. another one by now. I'm way behind, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Fiction for grades 2 to 5 or 6 or so. The Battle Begins by Tony Abbott is the first book in the Underworlds series. Mm -hmm. Owen is shocked when his best friend Dana is snatched through a hole in the school floor, which immediately seals closed again. With two new friends, John and Sydney, they must travel to Hades to rescue her. This adventure blends Greek, Norse, Egyptian, and other mythologies throughout the books in the series, and the gang will need to visit other legendary afterlives in order to finally rescue Dana. So they went to Hades in the first book, and there are four books out right now. I don't know how many are going to be all together in the series, but this is a paperback issue, and so you can buy those with a limited in investment of funds. This is an older book, but my goodness, with a subtitle like An Under-Earth Adventure, how can you not include it? Goblins by Royce Buckingham. PJ, he's 17, and he's the somewhat delinquent son of the sheriff of a small town, and Sam Hill is 12. They borrow the police car and soon find themselves underground. Sam has been captured by the goblins, and PJ has been shanghaied by two guardians, whose responsibility it is to keep the goblins from finding the surface. This is a great adventure for those people who love things like uh, names like Ooh, Yuck, and Bargle, and Snot, and other disgusting things that goblins are associated with. Things that kids will love. <laughs> that kids will love. But it also includes teamwork, trust, and concern for the human race. So it's not all yuck. 315 Season 1, Things That Go Bump in the Night by Patrick Carmen. Uh, Carmen here tells 10 spooky stories, and this is one another one of his where you start here, read the book, and then go back to the computer. 
the reader can go to the website 315stories.com to listen to an audio introduction. Then you read the, the book itself, the first part of the story. Then you go back to the web page to watch a video of the conclusion of the story. So it's kind of interesting, and you might want to do that. Sure. Was, yeah. yeah. Maybe kids will come in the library and use the computers in the library to, to do that, to read the story. The first story is titled Buried Treasure, and it fits the theme and is creepy without going over the top. A recluse has a golden hook on his arm, and he tells the young man, Cody, that that golden hook better be buried with him when he dies. Cody is not afraid to keep the golden hook until... And that's when you go see the video. <laughs> Atomic Ants tells of a thousand foot deep hole where people used to put nuclear waste. While at camp, Eddie takes the lid off the hole and he leaves it off. And something very bad happens. Poor Eddie. Another series that's been around for a while but again, perfect for this year. Gregor the Overlander by Suzanne Collins. Gregor 11 follows his two-year-old sister Boots into an air vent when they fall far below the surface of the earth through the unplanned. It is inhabited by humans who left the surface hundreds of years ago, and many other creatures like bats, giant cockroaches, six-foot-tall rats. Gregor learns he is the prophesied hero to save the humans from a rat invasion. And there are, again, five books in this series, and they are all available in paperback. <coughs> Excuse me. Troll Hunters by Michael Dahl. Originally published in four volumes, this edition contains the entire story in one volume. Trolls that live deep under the earth are on their way to the surface to enslave humans and take over the world. Four children stand in the way. Falling In by Frances O'Rourke Dowell. Isabella Bean is in middle school, hears some buzzing, and then falls through the nurse's closet to a different land below ours. She encounters a girl, Hen, who's about ten. Hen has lost her siblings on their way to their hideout camp in the forest. They are running from a terrible witch who eats children. Or does she? Hen and Isabel find a healer woman in the woods, and Sue Hen is learning about healing herbs. Isabel finds some truth about herself, her family, and friendship. The Midnight Tunnel by Angie Frazier. It is 1905, and Zana, 11, helps her parents manage the resort, the Rosemont. Each summer, wealthy families leave the cities for the cooler climate of New Brunswick. Zanna works where she is needed while learning her parents' roles. There's a tunnel that leads from the Rosemont to a nearby house that's used by the female staff. One night during a blackout, Zanna sees a small person leave the tunnel into the staff quarters by the light of a candle. The next morning, a seven-year-old guest is missing. A famous detective, Zanna's uncle, arrives to find the girl, but Zanna tries her hand at it too. This is the first in a new series titled Susanna Snow Mysteries. The second book in the series is out now, titled The Mastermind Plot, and I haven't read that one yet, I do. <clears throat> Love this one. <laughs> Secrets of Shakespeare's Grave by Darren R. Hicks. The founder of the family's publishing company was an acquaintance of Shakespeare. In modern day, the family lives in uh, Georgia. Colophon, 12, is the daughter of the current head of the country, and she must, of the company, excuse me, not the country, the head of the company, and she must help her uncle solve an age-old mystery or control of the company will go to another family member. The puzzles are intriguing, the search of the tomb in England is dangerous, and readers will enjoy the calamities that befall Coley's father. And again, this is the first in a new series. Mountain of Bones by Christopher Crobatin is another first book in a new series titled Grave Diggers. On a school-sponsored trip to the woods, Ian runs after a deer, and his friend PJ and Kendra follow him. Soon they are lost. <clears throat> it isn't long before they realize zombies are after them, though Kendra refuses to call them that. They do come up out of the ground. They realize they will have to work together to fix whatever safeguard they accidentally destroyed to keep the zombies from roaming off of the mountain. Adventure and horror with a touch of witchcraft. And this is when I take my advantage and bring in some of my favorite series because it fits the theme. So Nathaniel Flood, Beastologist, this is book three, and I think you can read it on its own without reading the other books. The Wyvern's Treasure by R. L. Lefevers. The short chapters and frequent illustrations will appeal to readers in, in the lower grades, 
Nate is 10 and his Aunt Phil is training him in the family business of beastology, working to save, protect, and keep secret mythological creatures. In this adventure, they must go to a cave in the mountains of Wales to calm and pacify the wyverns, or dragons, who claim the treaty with them has been broken. Nate and Aunt Phil must find out who is causing the trouble while avoiding being eaten by the young wyverns who really haven't learned their manners yet. Another series, Theodosia and the Last Pharaoh, also by R. L. Lefevers. This is book four in the Theodosia series, but I think they have a clever, she has a clever way of catching you up, and I think, again, you can read this by itself. Beginning on the first page, it's a to-do list that helps readers new to the series catch up with past happenings from books one through three. In this book, it is 1907, and Theodosia, 11, is once again in Egypt, helping her mother at a dig. Theodosia has some secret activities as well. One, to return two ancient artifacts to their proper guardians, and two, to find her contact for the Brotherhood of the Chosen Keepers. Lots of action and suspense, as well as finding a previous, previously undiscovered chamber near the dig. Magic, danger, and mystery combined with an intelligent and dedicated girl to bring more about the history of Egypt's past. Eliza's Freedom Road by Jardine Nolan. It isn't until the middle of the book after Eliza, who's 11 and then 12, has traveled to Maryland from Virginia with her mistress that she begins to realize Sir, her master, plans to sell her upon her return. And so she runs, following a freed slave's suggestions, and she is rescued along with some others by Harriet Tubman. Eliza's story quilt her mother made for her gives her a chance to tell some stories during their journey to Canada. There are occasional tight moments, but uh, overall the trip goes quite well for them. Spindlers by Lauren Oliver. <clears throat> Liza knows she must go below to rescue her younger brother Patrick's soul when something that is not Patrick was left in his place. She prepares, goes to the basement, and finds an entry into another world beneath our own. <clears throat> she befriends a rat, Mirabella, who promises to lead her to the spindlers who look like spiders. They are the ones who took her brother. They face challenges and danger before Liza is faced with three puzzles she must solve to save Patrick. Unusual creatures and an intrepid girl in a strange land will appeal to adventure readers. And I've said it before, there is a, a Magic Treehouse book for every theme possible. Um, this is number 13, so I didn't look very far before I found Vacation Under the Volcano by Mary Pope Osborne. Jake and Annie take the treehouse to Pompeii just before the volcano erupts in order to save a particular book for Morgan Le Fay. While they do not do any digging, the lava and ash flow and blow out of the top of the volcano. That's coming from underground, so I say this counts. <laughs> <laughs> the Flint Heart by Catherine and John Patterson was adapted from a 1910 story by Eden Philpott, and they, they noticed, note that on their, in their book. When the usually fun and loving father finds a flint heart in the earth while digging in the old graves for a bronze item a stranger has hired him to find, he becomes mean and abusive. Charles, 12, and his sister, Unity, 5, are soon asking for help from, and later helping, the Pixies, who reside in a hole in the ground. All of the trouble is due to this amulet's terrible effect on people. <coughs> Excuse me. Behind the Masks by Susan Patron. This is in, from the Dear America series. Angeline's father is the best lawyer around, and she does not believe he has been killed. And one of her first unladylike moves is to sneak into the undertaker's to check the casket. He is not in it. Solving the mystery of what happened to their father, her father and why are her main goals. And with the help of some friends, she is well on her way. And the reason this is uh, part of the, the summer reading program list is because a side story is about the town's group of vigilantes who hide their identities with masks or hoods. So kind of beneath the surface, who are they really? and uh, um, what, how they contribute or um, hold back her investigations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Treasure in the Graveyard by Roberto Pavolino is the first book in the Echo in the Backpack new series. Echo the Bat lives in the graveyard. One night he snoops after a hooded figure who um, is looking for something and Echo wants to know what, but that hooded figure sets his raven after Echo. In his desperate flight, Echo ends up in a bedroom and meets the three children who live in the house. 
He can talk with the children, and soon they are all investigated the hooded figure and what he was looking for in the graves. Frequent illustrations and plenty of white space will appeal to the target age group grades 2 to 3. This is a new series with six titles that came out in August of 20, 2012, and each has a slightly spooky aspect to the story, but this one most closely fitted the theme. Flat Stanley, with his worldwide adventures, he also fits the theme. The Great Egyptian Grave Robbery by Sarah Pennypecker. Stanley is mailed to Egypt to help with an archaeological project. After he arrives, he learns the person he is helping to discover the priceless giant scrolls of papyrus is actually a tomb robber. Stanley has to find a way to bring him to the authorities. It's another fun adventure with an ingenious flat boy. <clears throat> the Sword in the Grotto by Angie Sage is um, part of the Araminta Spooky series. It's number two. Wanda and her parents, Barry and Brenda Wizard, have moved into the, to the spooky house with um, Araminta and her parents. So there's a lot going on. Araminta and Wanda spy a, a, through, a, through a crack in the wall of the cave. They spy a sword, and they are determined to retrieve it for Sir Horace's 500th birthday. You see Sir Horace there on the covers. But while um, they go after it, they encounter a trap. They're caught there, and the tide is rising. Um, Ger Geronimo Stilton also has a number of books that could fit various themes. This is The Phantom of the Subway by Geronimo Stilton. It's number 13. Geronimo, who is a bit of a fraidy cat, hears a frightening meow in the subway station on his way to work. Soon he, his sister Thea, and some cousins are out to get the story, which means walking through the sewer and the subway tunnels. Told with many illustrations and colorful emphases on selected words to add appeal to younger readers. Jason Strange has written The Graveyard Plot. Damon, his mom, and her friend, and her friend's son, Jaden, all arrive at Damon's grandpa's house to get it ready to sail. He has moved to assisted living. While packing things up, Jaden finds an old photo of two boys, Damon's grandpa and someone they don't know. They show the photo to Grandpa, and he tells a story about a lost treasure his best friend Aaron, in the photo, went to the cemetery to find. He was never seen again. Jaden badgers Damon into finding the map and going to the cemetery against all the warnings Grandpa had given them. Who knows what they will find? This is a spooky tale with short chapters, larger type, and occasional illustrations. <clears throat> a Boy and His Bot by Daniel H. Wilson Code Lightfall is in sixth grade, and he and his class are at the mound site when he falls through a hole down under the earth. He finds himself in the world of Mechos, where there are robots of all kinds. With two new robot friends, Code sets off to find his grandfather, who disappeared almost a year ago. He is also trying to save Mechos from being destroyed. While on his quest, Code learns a few things about being proactive and stepping up when he is needed. And... This book could work for next summer's theme, too, which is this boom read. But it's about mm -hmm. <clears throat> science and, you know, we've got mm -hmm. all those robots there. Right. So double duty. <laughs> Nonfiction for grades 2 to 5 or 6 or so. Everything Ancient Egypt by Crispin Boyer. It's done by National Geographic Kids, so, of course, it's going to have mm -hmm. lots of wonderful photographs mm -hmm. and good information. It's a browser's look at mummies, tombs, Egyptologists, and digs in Egypt. Fascinating tidbits of information may inspire readers to search for greater details on those items and uh, think about a visit to Egypt sometime. Who knows? Giant Squid by Miriam Cerullo and Clyde F. E. Roper. Beginning with the legend of the Kraken, using a few early accounts and descriptions, the author presents the search for the giant squid. Scientists determined that such a creature existed based on the sucker markings on sperm whales and the beaks in their stomachs. The reader follows two scientists searching for video proof of the giant squid. One, Clyde F. E. Roper of the Smithsonian Institution's Museum of Natural History, and the other, Dr. Kudo Kubodera of Japan. Numerous excellent photographs will attract readers, and I really wish they put a big one of those photographs on the cover, because um, I think that would have made the book more appealing, but that's my opinion. Dinosaur Mountain by Deborah Cogan Ray is the story of Earl Douglas, who hopes to hope to find dinosaur bones through Andrew Carnegie and ended up finding bones on six continents. His original dig in the in the basin in Utah, located in 1908 and investigated in 1909, 
led to the discovery of an Apatosaurus skeleton. Many more discoveries were soon to come. Eventually, the area was named the Dinosaur National Monument. Some people have been there. Mm. I have not been, but I have heard of it, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. <clears throat> Buried Alive by Elaine Scott tells of the 33 miners trapped underground in Chile in 2010. Mm -hmm. It contains good basic information on how the collapse occurred and how the rescue efforts were conducted. Maps, diagrams, and photos aid in telling their story. Um, it includes an author's note and sources that also at the back of the book. Beneath the surface for our teen theme, we'll start with fiction for younger teens. The Bones of the Holy uh, by Jennifer Allison is Gilda Joyce Psychic Investigator Series Book 2, no, 5, sorry. A visit to St. Augustine, Florida is a dream come true for psychic investigators. Too bad it is because her mother is planning to remarry and marrying someone she doesn't know that well. Touring graveyards and discovering bones and artifacts in the backyard of their neighbor's house is just part of the adventure. And so is being trapped underground. Flip by Martin Bedford. Alex is 14 and he wakes up in the body of Philip or Flip Garamond and everyone sees him as Flip. Alex tries to understand what has happened and what, if anything, he can do about it. He learns he has experienced psychic evacuation, the transfer of his soul into another person's body. Pondering the soul, what it is, where it is, and what makes Alex who he is, is combined with desperate action by Alex that will keep readers involved. The Compound by S.A. Bodine was the um, Golden Sower Young Adult mm. winner in um, 2012. Mm. As it says inside the book jacket, Eli and his family have lived in the compound for six years. The world they knew was gone. Eli's father built the compound to keep them safe. Now they can't get out. He won't let them. Eli, now 15, has been told the world was destroyed by nuclear war. Now he is not so certain that that's true. Michael at the Invasion of France, France 1943 by Laurie Kalkoven. This is the Boys of Wartime Book 3, but each Boys of Wartime book takes a different boy in a different war, so you don't need to read them in order or read them all. In this book, Michael is 13. At the beginning of the book, the Nazis have marched into Paris where Michael, his younger sister Charlotte, and his mother live. His father is working with the Free French in England, and his older brother is a prisoner of war. Over time, Michael, whose mother is American, begins working with the French underground at first doing small things and slowly gaining more responsibility. Michael faces danger and tough decisions. I like the fact that they gave they put in a prologue at the beginning of the book to give some background about World War II prior to joining the story mm -hmm. because kids at this age aren't going to know that much about it. So, At the back of the book are historical notes, a timeline, and a glossary are also included. Sweet Venom by Tara Lynn Childs Grace is shocked to learn that she is not an average 16-year-old high school student. Gretchen, who has been fighting Greek monsters in secret for four years, isn't sure how she feels about finding Grace. Greer is in denial that she is in any way connected to the girl, two girls who look exactly like her. Soon they realize they are triplets and given the charge of protecting humanity from monsters, and the monsters are arriving more frequently. The first book of a new series has enough intrigue and action to maintain interest, and I haven't checked to see if the second book is out yet. <coughs> Croak by Gina Domico. Leg, <coughs> I'm so sorry. I'm going to take a drink. <coughs> yes, <I have> to. <coughs> Lex is 16, and she has been almost out of control for a while now. Unlike her twin sister, Cordy, who is the model of decorum, she just cannot stop herself from acting out. Now she has to spend the summer on the farm with Uncle Mort. Ugh. <laughs> However, it turns out that her uncle is a grim reaper, <clears throat> and she's one too. That explains the bad behavior. She has a lot to learn and a lot of souls to release from their bodies. During the summer, the younger reapers realize that someone is releasing souls that should not yet leave the body. They make some plans to learn who it is and capture them. Book two, titled Scorch, came out last September. So you have two books, actually, you can use for the theme. The Last Martin by Jonathan Friesen. Martin, 13, is the latest in a long line of Martin Boyles. Panic hits him when, during the family's annual visit to the graveyard, 
he realizes that every Martin Boyle has died the year the next Martin was born. His aunt is expecting, and they plan to name him Martin. Soon a few friends and are helping him find a way to survive this family curse. Wacky and quirky characters, the fear of ending up six feet under, Civil War reenactments, a possible girlfriend, and a vagrant boy make this a wild ride from the start. I'm sure you've already thought of the Tunnel series. Mm. This is the first book in the series. It's the only one I've read, to be truthful. Tunnels by Broderick Gordon and Brian Williams. Life is not typical for Will Burroughs, 14, who enjoys archaeological digging in London as much as his father. It's rather a bit of a hobby for them. After his father disappears, Nick and, uh, Will and Chester follow him to discover a separate society living deep underground, and that society does not like topsoilers. The first underground society they encounter is a somewhat Victorian or Dick Dickensian, but there are more books in the series. I think there's going to be six altogether. Five are out right now, and they encounter other societies way underground. The Agency 3, The Traitor in the Tunnel, by Y.S. Lee, is a Mary Quinn mystery. Mary is assigned to work as a servant in Buckingham Palace to keep an eye out for a thief of trinkets. They think the person is getting access through this tunnel that connects the palace to the outside world. But a more serious crime occurs, and the prince is an unreliable witness to it. Mary may have found her father, who's been lost for years. He is a man accused of the murder. Cinder by Marissa Meyer is the first book in the Lunar Chronicles series. In this futuristic reinvented fairy tale, Cinder remembers nothing before waking up at age 11 as a cyborg. The father who adopted her is dead and her stepmother treats her like a slave. When one stepsister contracts a fatal disease, her mother offers Cinder as a test subject for research. She is the first cyborg or anyone to survive. And uh, this, uh, there are four books planned all together. Scarlet came out last November. I haven't read that one yet either, but I do have a copy. <laughs> so again, it's the beneath the surface. Who is she? A cyborg, a human, both? A Girl Named Digit by Annabelle Monaghan. Sarah, a.k.a. Digit, is 17, and she has hidden her math genius from her friends and classmates because she doesn't want them to think she's weird. But when she notices a series of numbers during the opening sequence of her favorite TV show, she contacts the FBI. They soon have her under their protection, and while she tries to continue to solve the mystery of those numbers, she is also trying to keep from falling for her protector. Because that happens. Mm -hmm. Starters by Lissa Price. A year after biological warfare stuck the U struck the U.S. and killed everyone between the ages of 20 and 60, Callie is doing her best to care for her younger brother, Tyler, who's seven. She goes to a place that promises her an incredible payment just to allow her body to be used by an, an older person. They inhabit it and walk around and, you know, do mm. things like go skydiving and things. And, and uh, she is, to her mind, she is like asleep or unconscious. Mm. However, when she does this, she finds that occasionally she comes to consciousness and is... Um, not sure what's happened with the person who's inhabiting her body. She does learn during this time that there is a group of enders or elderly who are planning to use starters, the young people, permanently. Now she has to decide what she can do and how she can do it. This is another fast-moving dystopian novel that raises questions about who should have rights and why. And the second mm. book uh, just came out, I believe it's out now, called Enders. Mr. Creature by Chris Priestley. Billy, 15, is a pickpocket and a thief, but he is shocked by the presence of a huge man whose appearance is repugnant. They soon become companions, and over time the man, whom Billy calls Creature, assists Billy several, several times. Soon, Billy is following two men for Creature. One of them is named Frankenstein. The reader slowly learns more details about Creature and his goals, and while they share friendship for a time, they also conspire to rob, bash in heads, and eventually go their separate ways. The author has taken a part of Mary Shelley's book, Frankenstein, and imagined this story inserted into it, because there, apparently there's a part during Frankenstein where nothing is accounted for, though I have not read Frankenstein. Hmm. That's the implication. While this is a horror story, it also shows man's need to belong. Both Billy and Creature feel like outsiders. 
Here lies Link by Delia Ray. Link is 12 and he just started junior high school. Actually, he just started public schools too. His earlier schooling was as part of a, a home school group. His father died when he was seven and he and his mother lived next to the town cemetery. The adopt a grave class assignment is a catalyst for all kinds of trouble and revelations that Meyer Link in several messes. His theft of a crypt key to impress another student is his worst move. Link finds navigating junior high, public school in general, changing relationships with friends, former friends and family, are a lot to take on in this first fall. The real epitaphs from tombstones that start each chapter are intriguing and could result in readers taking their own hand at it and writing some epitaphs to put on a tombstone. The Hunchback Assignments by Arthur Slade. Steampunk features Moto, who's 14. He was rescued at the age of one from being a sideshow attraction. He is malformed, a hunchback with a misshapen face. His rescuer now needs him to help the Permanent Association fight the Clockwork Guild's plans to gain control of Britain. Moto is especially needed because he has the ability to change his looks for a few hours and will make an excellent spy or double. Venturing into tunnels under London to find the Guild and uncover their plans, Moto's transformations leave some wondering who he really is. Intrigue, danger, and questions about who to trust will draw mystery and suspense fans, along with steampunk fans as well. And yes, this is the book I talked about before that scared the hooey out of me. <laughs> Monstrumologist by Rick Yancey. The main character, Will Henry, is 12 and is the assistant to Dr. Worthrop, a monstrumologist, one who studies and defeats various monsters in the world. A knock at the door in the middle of the night begins this adventure when a local grave robber brings in a strange and fearsome dead creature. The monstrumologist is certain that there are more such creatures and they must be destroyed as soon as possible. And where are they? Of course, they are living in tunnels beneath the cemetery. And I am a chicken, as I've said before, <laughs> but I did read this whole book, and I read the second book, too, about different creatures, but my, it's scary. Nonfiction for teens includes another book about the miners being rescued. This is titled Trapped by Mark Aronson. He alternates between above ground and below ground, with the chapters alternate. He gives the readers details about the miners that were trapped, the efforts to rescue them, and um, how the miners um, organized themselves to survive until they found out that people were tr trying to help them get out. I do another thing I also like about this book, besides the diagrams and some things that they have in there, is that at the back he includes four pages that, where he explains that his methods of research for this book and why Google and Wikipedia weren't enough for the job. And I think his explanation is so clear and understandable that there would be a, a news item put out and then everybody else takes parts of that news item and posts it on their page. So you can have mm -hmm. 400 references. They're all referring back to the same one the article. one originals right up. Yeah. And I thought that was so clear. If you just take that part of the book and <laughs> talk to kids about it, it might help when they're doing there's nothing wrong with using Google and Wikipedia mm -hmm. as a starting point, sure. But that's you not going to be track back to where it all came from yeah. originally, though, yeah? You have to find some other things, too. I thought that was terrific. Journey into the Deep by Rebecca L. Johnson. I didn't even know this was happening at the time. The census of marine life was conducted between the years 2000 and 2010. Scientists from 82 countries shared the goal of recording all the creatures and plant life they found trying to learn more about how to protect the, the ocean environment. Amazing photographs of newly discovered creatures as well as some well-known ones will attract browsers and it does include an index. But you can see that creature on the cover. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I, that's just bizarre, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Giant and How He Humbugged America by Jim Murphy. Digging up the Cardiff Giant captured many people's attention mm -hmm. and they swarmed to pay for the chance to see it. Then they learned it was a hoax. The giant and the men behind the hoax are revealed in this readable look at one effort to fool everyone while making some money. The final chapter lists brief information on four other famous hoaxes, and you might have a, a let's create our own hoax but not really go do it <laughs> activity. Forensic Identification, Putting a Name and Face on Death by Elizabeth A. Murray. Excellent photos and an appealing format will draw readers interested in how human remains are identified it includes a bibliography and an index. And that this topic has always fascinated teens and adults as well. So this might be popular with your adult 
readers to put it out on display. <clears throat> Some fiction for older readers. This doesn't show up very well. Uh, the title of the book is Berserk, but it's spelled B-Z-R-K. Hmm. It comes through cool. Oh, it does? Yeah. It just says here. Okay. It's by Michael Grant. Subtle war between good and evil, Sadie is 16, and Noah are being trained in the battle. The warfare uses biots, which have a touch of the controller's DNA, and nanobots to access people's brains and manipulate their thoughts, memories, and desires. Generally, they crawl up the face and get into the person's head through the yeah, eye. You that creeps me a, out. <laughs> you can't feel a thing. They're so teeny tiny, and they go into your brain, and they make you like things that you didn't like before or whatever. Conspiracies are everywhere, and death is always around the corner. Anyone can be brought down by another nanobot if their defenses are overcome. Creepy and clever, more titles are on the way. Though I haven't seen uh, an announcement of publication date yet. Dead Connection by Charlie Price is an older book, but also works for this theme. High school loner Murray is most comfortable at the cemetery. He can talk with the dead, and they are his best friends. A high school girl, a cheerleader, is missing, and she is presumed kidnapped. Is she the new voice Charlie is hearing? He teams up at first reluctantly with the caretaker's daughter Pearl to try to find the truth. This book does include some pretty aspects of alcohol abuse and life on the streets. Um, the assistant at the cemetery is involved in some underhanded things. Mm -hmm. Misfit by John Skolbrun, Yael, spelled with a J, has known since she was eight that her mother was a demoness. Now, on her 16th birthday, her father keeps a promise and gives her the necklace that had been her mother's. He tells her not to wear it, but when she does, she begins to discover her demon side, and she also begins to attract the attention of the demon that killed her mother when she was a baby. Shifting from Yael's life at 16 to her parents' lives as husband and wife demon hunters, they hunted the bad demons. Her mom's a good demon. It, the story shifts back and forth between time frames. She has a new possible boyfriend, Rob, and uh, that might keep readers' interests too. Mm -hmm. Of course, the series by Alexander Gordon Smith, Lockdown, is the first title in the Escape from Furnace series. In this first book, Alex Sawyer, he was a thief and a bully, but he was not a murderer. Still, he is sent to Furnace, the ultimate prison for murdering his friend. Here, far below the surface, he learns to survive to stay out of fights because what happens to troublemakers is gruesome. Even so, you never know when they will come for you. He has to find a way out, but everyone knows there is no way out of Furnace. There are five books in this series. The fifth book, the final book, just came out either late last year or early this year. I finished it, yes. It's also excellent. Mm -hmm. Double by Jenny Valentine. <clears throat> Chap is 16, and he has been on his own in London since he just became a teen. He's been in and out of foster homes, but he prefers to live homeless when he can. He is picked up and placed in temporary quarters, and the staff is thrilled to learn that he was reported missing, and he is actually Cashel Road Knight. Chap goes along with it, even though he knows he is not the missing person, because having a family sounds great. Things soon get out of hand, though, as Chap realizes his life is now in danger, and he must find out what really happened to Cashel before it happens to him. Fans of mystery and suspense novels will likely enjoy this look at family, finding oneself, and surviving unknown threats. Shifting by Bethany Wiggins. Maggie is 17, and she has just been moved to another foster home. She lost the last of her family, her aunt and cousin, when she was five, and she's been moved frequently since then. What no one knows is that she shifts into an animal once a month. Not a werewolf, just an animal. Different animals. In a small town in Silver City, New Mexico, she has the chance to finish high school and decide on the rest of her life. Bridger, the hottest guy at school, might be interested in her, but strange things keep happening. What is going on, and who is the stranger who keeps asking for her at the restaurant where she works? It is supernatural with Native American elements added to it. The Replacement by Brenna Yovanov. Mackie is 16, and he is a replacement or a changeling. When the others, please do not call them fairies, they despise that term. <laughs> when the others stole the baby, Mackie was left in its place. Lately, he has begun to feel worse and worse. All the other replacements died long before reaching the age of 16. Now Mackie could die soon as well. Then a stranger leads him to the entrance to their, the other's world underground. 
They give him a potion and he feels strong and well again. What do they want from him in exchange? Things get pretty dark and gory before the not too dark ending. And then there's a few older titles you also might think of because I hesitated to include two, two older titles, but The City of Ember by Jean Dupra. Mm -hmm. um, this is not included in Nebraska's movie license, of rats. Yeah. but um, the book is excellent about the people under the earth who have lived in, you know, there's, things are starting to go get broken on them and they have mm -hmm. to figure out a way to get out. There's also David McCauley's Underground book, which was published in 76. So, but the cross-section of what's under the city intersection is going to fascinate some readers. Uh, maybe you can find a paperback copy of it to include. And of course, it's not going to have like fiber optic cables running along underground to what we have now. But still, it could be fun. Also, Holes by Lewis Sacker. And that one is in the Nebraska blank blanket license for public libraries, and a number of other types. But that's my mm -hmm. list for now, so thank you. Okay. And are there any questions or? Um, let's see, nothing came in while you were talking. Everyone was probably just listening just and starting learning about all the great hope. stories. Yes, that's what I do. I get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Sally. Does anyone have any questions or comments or anything? You can um, enter them in the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, and I can see them here. Um, You can always email me with questions later. Yes, you can always contact out Sally for more ideas or I, uh, questions about where some of these books are. Um, and I, um, I like the, um, these summer reading programs, especially like when you were mentioning that a lot of these are <clears throat> not always necessarily new books. And I think it's good to, to be able to, you don't have to all oh, just look for the newest published ones for these. You know, there's always older ones that are great stories. <laughs> and the manual, the summer reading program manual from the Collaborative Summer Library Program group does have book lists there too. So these mm -hmm. are, um, some of them are new because they're too new to be on that book list. And some of mm -hmm. them are just older ones that I remember and really enjoy. And found and pulled out yourself, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so these are just some ideas, and um, if you have other ones yourself that you know of, too, you can add them to your list. Absolutely. Um, great. Just a couple of thank yous. Thank you. Great ideas to give me a head start. Yes, that's the idea. That would be good. <laughs> all right. Um, yes, all of our recordings are, are um, someone asked if this be archived. Yes, we are recording. Um, all of our Encompass Live shows are recorded. Um, the PowerPoint presentation, which is just the... Um, book covers will be posted as well, but we also have the handout with the descriptions that Sally was just reading as well with the more detailed information about each book um, will also be available as well as a PDF. We already have that up and that will be out there as well. So um, if you came in late or wanted to get the actual handout and more um, detailed information about all the titles, um, you'll have that available as well afterwards. Great. Okay. All right, doesn't look like anything else urgent has come in. So I think we will wrap it up for this morning. Thank you very much, Sally. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, and uh, did I forget? there we go. Um, so that will wrap it up for this week's Encompass Live. Uh, I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is, we just added this to the schedule, it's a last minute thing, uh, customer service means convenience. Oh, uh, I want to see that. <laughs> Laura Johnson, who is the continuing education coordinator here at the Library Commission, is going to be doing a presentation about research into how to um, make your library um, more convenient and open to people using um, things like what convenience stores or businesses use as you know ways to uh, tweak your displays and whatnot. And so she'll be with us next week um, to share that. So I hope you'll, sh you'll sign up for that. Uh, if you are interested in other learning opportunities, I hadn't brought this up yet, but um, we just want to mention Whoa, whatever, somewhere else. Let's try this again. Hit the wrong key. Um, we have the Nebraska Learns 2.0 program here in the state, where if anyone wants to, you can participate in this. We offer a new um, resource, tech tool, something you can learn about each month, once a month for CE credits. Um, we also offer a book you can read and earn CE continuing education credits as well. So this is the book for this month, You're Not a Gadget. And if we scroll down, the 
uh, thing you can learn about this month is social news sites, things that you can chat on and um, get involved with um, there. So if you're interested in more um, educational opportunities and to learn more things than what we put here in Encompass Live, we definitely encourage you to join, um, to uh, sign up and participate in Nebraska Learns. Um, back to Encompass Live. We hope you join us for next week. We are on Facebook, as you can see here. There's a link to our Encompass Live Facebook page. So if you're a big Facebook user, please go ahead and join us there. Um, we post when new shows are available, when the recordings are up, anything interesting we come up that might be related to a show. Um, you can sign up um, if you are a Facebook user and hear from us on there as well. Um, other than that, if nothing new has come in in the questions, I didn't think I saw anything. Then um, we will wrap it up for the day. There's our website, Grand Compass Live. And hope to see you next week. Thanks. Bye-bye.